What's up everybody, Martimavex forever here and today I finally decided to start on some more advanced motor control and uh, some more motor uh, uh, PID control algorithm because it's nothing but nets. People are doing flywheels and uh, flywheels require some really uh, uh, intricate and in-depth motor control and I feel like I really need to start it and get this series done before I go to school and before the uh, competition officially starts in North America um, just so that I can somehow I mean, help you guys a little bit so I, th I figured that uh, talking about the uh, t talking about this curve understanding this graph and um, talking about the uh, linearization of uh, talking about the linearization of um, World Jurassic Control, or at least talking about the speed linearization of a motor, is a pretty good place to start. It's something very basic. It's basically the, the place where I started with this entire PID control and stuff, because you need a static gain, and this is just basically the static gain, which we'll talk about later. Um, all right, so um, imagine this, or not rather imagine this. Uh, so how do you exactly control a motor in VEX Robotics? Well, basically, you, what you would do is that you would give a value from negative 127 to positive 127 to the motor, like everybody does. Say if you want, want the motor to spin at maximum speed, you would give the motor 127 or negative 127, depending on the, the uh, direction. Uh, well, it's the same thing in EZC uh, uh, and RobotC, except in EZC, you pop in the window and type in the value. In RobotC, you basically uh, just type in n motor equals 2. Um, well, and you also know that to make this thing spin slower, you need to give it a lower value somewhere around 40 and 50 is nice, maybe slow spinning uh, motor and somewhere around 60 or 70 is basically the full speed. All right. So, uh, but that's just basically knowing that the, the, the bigger the value is, the faster the motor spins. But how exactly? This graph explains how exactly the motor spins under free load and uh, uh, I mean under uh, with no load. So and this is uh, a 269 motor and uh, there's another uh, two, uh, uh, excuse me, 393 motor counterpart of this graph. And uh, I probably should have demonstrated that, uh, uh, demonstrating that idea with that, but I guess this is good enough. Well, it's basically the same thing. So uh, let's look at the uh, red uh, curve because we are going to be using motor controller 29 a lot. Uh, basically, this is saying that this is the motor control value. This axis is the motor control value. And this axis is the motor free speed with no load free spin speed. And um, what it tells you is that basically, if you give the motor a 32, the motor's free speed is going to be around 40, 60, around 70 RPM, around there. So that's basically what it's telling you. If you are, you've taken a basic algebra course and you know what the function is, uh, you should know what this represents. Like when I first saw this, I was like, ooh, wow, why? Because we always thought it's somehow, yeah, there is somehow a positive correlation between the two values. We know that the bigger this value is, the bigger this value is, but how exactly? We always thought it's some, somewhere linear we, because we didn't actually exactly know, but it's actually not linear. The graph shows the misappearance testing and, uh, uh, I mean, Jordan's uh, testing the both indicated that it's some, it, it's a weird curving. It's, it's a weird concave up curving. You can call this a, um, rational curve. Uh, in calculus, it's called concave up because it's, it's caving up. Uh, or rather a logarithmic curve because it can be approximated by a log, uh, by, by a, a logarithmic curve. So basically what you're saying is that w what we know about motor is that basically is spinning at approximately half speed if you give it somewhere around 30. That's what it's saying. If you give it around uh, a value around 60, you think is, I mean, 60 is a half of 120. If you give it a 64, you would think intuitively, you would think that the motor is at half speed, but actually is almost is full speed. So that's what I wanted to demonstrate. Study this curve, and this curve is something very basic about the uh, motor. And this, the, the blue just demonstrates the uh, Cortex port 10, which the two is the two-wire port, and the red just demonstrates the um, 
the uh, three wire port with the mode controller. All right, so um, what does this mean? That means um, although you can have some more load on the motor, the shape of the motor control curve, uh, uh, or rather the shape of the curve between motor control value and motor speed, not just free speed, is going to somehow follow this shape. For instance, you might say that a motor on the base is carrying a lot of load, and if if you gear this motor super, uh, if you make the gearing high, and the base doesn't run as fast as the free speed, maybe this curve is even pressed down, like somewhere like this. Maybe it's somewhere like this, or maybe it's even pressed down further, like uh, like this. Maybe if you, your your base, if uh, your gear ratio does not suit your base really well, maybe even when you are giving the base a value of thirty, which is right on the edge of um, completely stalling it and not tripping the PDC. Maybe even you give, sometimes uh, on a lift or a base, it, even if you give the motor a value of 30, it would still not, it would still not spin at all. So maybe on your actual application, the curve is curved down like this, perhaps, maybe, but it's always going to follow a concave up shape and, uh, which, which is not quite good because why? Because Jordan, uh, in his thread in, uh, that he did around, um, excuse me. In his thread that he did around uh, 2013, uh, May in 2013, that's basically right after. Uh, that that's that's yeah, that's right um, after Sack Attack World Championship. Uh, he posted this thread, and I just basically re re I'm mean, reading a lot of things. And the uh, quote I was talking about is that yes. He talked about that how it's pretty difficult to control the uh, motor valve. Uh, it's pretty difficult to control a very fast base with a uh, traditional mapping, which is this mapping. And um, what uh, the quote I'm looking for is: "You would need to push the joystick less than the fifth of the way to get the motors to run at half speed," which is true according to this graph but it doesn't make quite it doesn't quite make sense in our actual driving in our actual driving what we always want to do is say that we always want to say that um when i push the joystick halfway i want the motor to run halfway so knowing that the curve somehow looks like this and the curve is basically data and we can get the data on our own based on a practical application we can use going there use encoder to basically test out our own uh, graph it might look something like this perhaps if it's under load not completely free spinning if it's two uh, if it's a 393 motor it might look something different but it's always con concave up we might be able to do what jordan did in his thread which is basically to reverse the uh, motor control uh or, which is basically to reverse this uh, this curve and then to linearize the motor control value just well based on your situation of course what that means is that you always uh, basically i said the word linearization at the beginning basically what linearizing means is that you make this curve linear somehow to after processing your motor control value input uh, your raw motor control value input so basically you say that it's, it's an algorithm saying that i want the motor to run at half speed so you might put in the value in a byte value form uh, 64 if you give the motor 64 I want the motor to run at the speed of 60 so I, we want somehow to process our input value from 0 to 122 from excuse me negative 128 to 128 and then process it and and then give the motor and then make the entire thing linearized or Maybe starting from here because you can't linearize this part, or maybe you can. Uh, yeah, just to make this thing a little bit linear, so that in uh, the uh, most direct application is that in driving is a lot easier. It's gonna make it much more maneuverable, the uh, drive much more maneuverable. But this is a concept that's very useful. You, I mean, you can basically after linearize it, you can use any sort of algorithm to make it any shape you want. Maybe you can make it concave down, or maybe you can make it more concave up, or you, you can make it, uh, I mean, step by step, if you even, even if, uh, I mean, if you wanted to. 
So I just want to introduce you to the idea that you can, uh, I mean, what's this, first, what this graph means, and second, what it means to linearize the, this entire thing is to make this graph linear so that you have more control of the motor. And third, I mean, basically, the, the, the idea that you can do it and that you should do it, you always should linearize the motor graph because uh, Jordan did it in 2013 and Mr. Pierman said something with Mr. Pierman. Mr. Pierman commented somewhere below saying, oh, awesome job. And Mr. Pierman said, our team uh, did it with a uh, logarithmic approximation, which means that they used basically a logarithmic regression to approximate that data. And they did something very similar. And I will uh, explain these codes further, uh, I mean, these graphs further. But the idea is that you can manipulate these values and you can control these values and so i just want to I want to introduce this graph to you and just generally talk about how to make this thing linear and what you do is that in program you somehow use an algorithm to make it linear all right so it's just some intuition about uh how the motor works and uh yeah we know that the the, the more the control value the faster the motor spins but how exactly this is how exactly well, that's basically my, my point. And, uh, well, with this intuition, we know what we're doing when I'm talking about when I start typing codes about linearization. And uh, maybe we start doing something in uh, Excel and, uh, in this case, Google spreadsheet about linearization. And uh, then we use that data to write our codes. You know what we're talking about. And then we, from there, we can improve our driving. We can improve our PID control algorithm and, um, yeah, basically that's it. This is just the uh, first episode, some more intuition about motors and stuff and the most basic stuff. And uh, this is Marmov X Forever. I will see you in the next episode.